Okay, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to uh, the Louisville Metasploit class, as taught by Dave Relic Kennedy, Marvin Purehate Boss, Elliot Northwick Cutright, Ken Power Cycle, summer last name, and Adrian Ivy Crenshaw. Um, first of all, I'd like to do a few thank yous, and I'm not sure I have Brian come up here to do one of the thank yous. Uh, first of all, to the ISA officers for helping get all this organized, to the speakers, of course, who I just covered, Dave Martin, Elliot, and Power Cycle, and uh, for Tipping Point and the ISSA chapter for sponsoring lunch for us and the venue, we had a problem with the registration system. Future registration systems, I'm going I'm to come up with some way of handling that better, probably a, a web form where you have to register. Uh, uh, of course, HD Moore for uh, Metasploit, and also, I believe, we have those beta licenses? Still working on that. Still, all right. We may have an announcement later on about some uh, extra perks for being here. Uh, of course, the... Uh, Metasploit Unleashed, it's the security team for creating the Metasploit Unleashed documentation, which if you haven't seen it, is pretty much the best documentation out there on how to uh, use Metasploit. Metasploit is an awesome package, but it's such a moving target that documenting it is hard, and the Metasploit team themselves have not done as much documentation as some of us might like. Luckily, other people like Dave Kennedy of uh, the Metasploit Unleashed team have started adding on to it. And, Done a great work that way. And of course, also Johnny Long for his charity work. Hopefully, everybody got that donation in. And a bunch of others who I'm forgetting. At this point, I'm going to call Brian up to say a couple of words. Just a quick note. Uh, as Adrian mentioned, Tipping Point sponsored a major portion of the lunch and everything here. And I want to say that their, uh, their people weren't able to make it today. The sales guy that was going to come to say a couple of words had a death in the family. And what I'd like to do is, uh, since he's not going to be here to even uh, introduce himself, he'd like to have someone get back to his marketing department. I'm going to pass around. It's totally voluntary. It's separate than the sign-in. But if people would put an email address on here, just so we can give them something back. Really appreciate Tipping Point. They have been very supportive of the InfoSec community. Not only this, but the InfoSec conference, Daycon and Dayton. They do a lot for the uh, InfoSec community. That's it. Thank you. All right. And if anybody's uh, Twittering this event, this is the tag we decided to use next to the bin. Um, and beyond that, question, uh, where's Martin at? Here. Martin, yeah. tell us about the network layout and what people can connect to. Um, you want me to come up there? Sure. Oh. There's three access points that you can connect to. In case you didn't notice, they're all called hostile. One, two, and three. Um, we did that, so hopefully no hotel guests will uh, connect to those. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go over here and get the three IPs um, that, that are our target VMs, and we'll post those in just a second. I, I, I didn't realize I was going to put those up there, but uh, go ahead. I'll hold on one second. You go ahead and go over there and clean them out. All right. Now, hopefully, did everybody get one of these little sheets? These are essentially the notes of the exercise I'm going to run through when I start covering my part of Metasploit. If you didn't get one, I think we have a bunch at the front desk still. So if people want to write these down, the XPBM is uh, dot one two eight. Surprise me. Oh, okay. So, yeah. surprise me. Yeah. 
169. Make sure to be on itself also has a network card configure. In other words, going to the same hardware, and it should have a network card. You know, it knows it's supposed to have a network card. I'll double check that. If you have USB support, I can give you a wireless dongle, and might be able to get you connected straight. Well, the wireless card is looking great. Like well, I'm, I'm saying a wireless dongle that you can tell is a device to backtrack for itself. Okay, do we get the holes that off? Uh, luckily, I don't have to use no wireless network for uh, for mine. Thanks for setting all that up, by the way, Martin. And also thanks to the Inisploit crew for letting us uh, borrow their VM that they already had set up. It saved us some time. So, with no further ado, a little bit about me. My name is Aiden Crenshaw. I run a website called irongeek.com. Anybody been there? Thank you much. Imagine you haven't been there to actually find out the information for this uh, event. I'm also a member of the ISD InfoSec Daily Podcast. Check it out. They uh, do a podcast five times a week. Uh, I'm usually on only once a week, though. I have an interest in InfoSec education. I don't know everything. I'm just a geek of extra time on my hands. It's possible I might tell you something completely wrong. Luckily, my uh, fellow instructors are sure to correct me if I mistake anything. First of all, first thing I want to talk about is what is Metasploit? I'm assuming you know roughly what Metasploit is because you're in this class. But first, it's an exploitation framework. Essentially, it's a set of tools, a code, and so forth that makes it easier to develop exploits and uh, do exploitation and do pen testing in general. The current version is all written in Ruby. My understanding is it's uh, the world's largest Ruby project and probably has more source code in Metasploit than in the Ruby compiler itself, or Ruby interpreter itself, pardon me. Uh, includes all sorts of things. Exploits, for instance, payloads, auxiliaries, which I'll cover a little bit here in a, shortly, and I think, uh, who's covering most of all auxiliaries? Ken? Okay. Um, automated tools and a lot more. As far as automation tools is concerned, we have the king of automation tools from Metasploit here in the uh, class today, Dave Kennedy. All right, some terminology, just in case you don't know it already, though I imagine most of these things are going to be self-evident. Uh, first of all, exploit. Basically, a vector for getting into a system, whether it be a vulnerability or just a bad config. I suppose, in a fashion, one of the exploits you can choose, for instance, in uh, Metasploit is uh, the, the PS exec execute. It's not really a it's not really an exploit in the sense it's a vulnerability, but if someone has a weak password, I suppose you could see it as an exploit. Regardless, I'm going to be using it in some parts because as long as the system has its administrative shares open, I know it'll work. The problem with exploits is you'll have mixed results on whether that one will work, and sometimes you have to try it more than once to actually get it to work. Sometimes you have to slightly modify the exploit to actually get it to function properly in a given environment. Like the time of Dave Kennedy hacked my box at uh, Louisville. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Before finding out the scope passed. <laughs> That's the whole thing with the scope. It's okay, we still love you, Dave. Alright. Payload. Payload is essentially what you want the ex exploit to do in uh, the parlance of Metasploit. This could be your shell code. Basically, it would sort of get injected by the exploit and tell it to do something. This could be something like add an account, shovel the shell back to me, stop a BNC session, or probably the coolest payload, Meterpreter, which basically gives you a little, I guess, remote access tool on the box to do all sorts of things. I'm going to show a little bit of that, and I think Mark is going to go into more depth. You also have encoders. Uh, any virus packages will detect most stuff in Metasploit. Well, if not obfuscated in some way, it should hopefully detect most stuff in Metasploit. The way encoders work is they change the code around enough to where, and mangle it enough to where any virus packages like Symantec hopefully won't necessarily detect it. And there's also two encoders that come with Metasploit. The one that's probably the most famous is Shikata Ganai, which is, uh, as I'm understanding, is a Japanese term for nothing can be done about it. And I've had pretty good results with it. Um, also, auxiliaries are all sorts of other little fun apps built into Metasploit. We're talking about things like sniffers and uh, scanners, uh, denial of service attacks. Just a ton of different tools. Okay, I'm also going to talk a little bit about payloads. By the way, all this definitional stuff is so that it makes more sense when I actually get to the demonstration. First, those inline payloads. Basically, with these payloads, once the exploit is ran, the entire payload, including the shell code and everything, gets sent. Um, the problem is it makes it a little bit bigger to send, but they are more stable. Uh, another way of doing things.